Uh, hello everybody, it's Pierre again. Uh, today we're gonna start on a new project. I uh, have a little bit more time so can uh, start more interesting stuff than just like a thing that must be done or uh, repairs that are urgent or whatever things like that. So it's a uh, project I wanted to undergo for a while now. It's uh, six jaw chuck with synchronized uh, jaws on it and uh, I've been having it for maybe I don't know maybe a year not not maybe a year but almost a year and never had time to really uh, get into it so uh, got this it's uh, not exactly a specific brand or anything I don't think so but it was like uh, just about unused and uh, unwarned and just in very good condition paid a few hundred bucks for it so like uh, can't complain and uh, that chuck comes with uh, no no adapter plate for the late so it's just like uh, open back like that one good thing about that chuck is you can adjust the um, the centering on it so if you have a run out or anything like that you can bring it to uh, a few tenths even even like you know close to a few tenths which is very good in the three jaw or a six let's say in this case a six jaw synchronized chuck and uh, for holding round parts that uh, have tin walls or parts that need a really uh, good holding grip it's uh, it's a must a six jaw chuck is let's say at least twice as much as a, a three jaw will give you and as far as deforming pipes or things, uh, tenor wall stuff, it's uh, another asset there you get. So I have to machine. Just move it back down. It's kind of heavy though. It's a ten inches, so it's uh, getting into the the heavier uh, the heavier game. And uh, just got this plate here. It's a D16. It's an adapter plate. It's not uh, it's not ready to go on the chuck now was used but uh, usable and the part I'll have to machine is this this part there that will have to fit into the uh, back of the other the other the other surface which is uh, have to be adjustable so I'll give it about uh, probably a 20 to 25 thousand uh, adjustment on it uh, it's not made really to go for uh, let's say you want to make uh, decentered or uh, let's say any anything that's um, like a, you want to make a drive shaft and do the uh, the off center so you mean forget that I mean it, it won't work just like it's mostly to give you a courtesy on the on the chuck that you can do some fine adjust it will vary uh, depending upon where on the scroll your jaws are uh, Leaning. If you're towards the center, it might be different from uh, let's see a few turns on the on the uh, on the scroll, and if you get like near the uh, full extension, then it might be different. So it might might have to be adjusted to the work you do. So let's say you do a lot of piping, let's say six inches, then you adjust it to piping six inches, then you'll be always like very close to uh, zero run out or a few tenths of run out. That's a nice thing about that. So that will be it. Kind of a, lots of material to remove, and these are the. Uh, I'll put it on the other side. These are the pins. The D1, uh, the D1 pins. This is the D16 size, and the D16 size, if I'm right, is uh, oh, is that three quarters of an inch? Or let me just check it out. Okay, it's. Uh, Oh, it's closer than the, closer than the bigger size than three quarters of an inch. That's more like uh, seven eighths of an inch. Eight uh, eight seventy eight seventy five. So these are pretty big, uh, pretty big pins. And now uh, this. No modification, no nothing. Just have to, because the pins are pretty, uh, pretty dirty. 
nice clean up on them will do a decent job and we'll go to the adjustment of that and uh, those other stuff later to uh, machine the uh, back plate I have to mount it so the D pins have to be mounted on the plate so cleaned up I cleaned this one here not using very uh, elaborate process for that I'm using scotch bright I'm doing it by hand it's not very hard it's just a there's a light a very light rusty uh, deposit on it but nothing uh, nothing so great that it won't go it's just like it's surface so see like here it'll just like uh, there's no uh, you don't feel anything it's just like uh, colored in the surface of the metal so it's just like uh, not they're not worn or they're not uh, damaged by rust or anything like that they were kept like uh, oily a little bit but sometimes oil uh, it's got a little bit of humidity in it and uh, it will cause some light surface rust and oil can't be everywhere so and as far as sandpaper is used like I, I'm using like 220 grit I'm just very lightly you don't want to you don't want to go with aggressive paper or anything like that there you go and I'm not going to bore you with the rest of them, but I'll show you right now the uh, preparation for this uh, this plate here. This and the uh, taper that is here, this surface there, will be um, mounted on the uh, on the let's say the, the mounting on on the lathe itself. So this has to be perfectly flat and this here has to be with no uh, no dents no dings just no uh, no whatever so it's just like that this part here will give you the precision every time you're gonna mount and unmount your part from uh, from the lathe okay now we're back so I've cleaned up a little bit that surface has to be as clean as it can be and a little bit on this one but uh, we'll have to touch it up probably it's, uh, it's the rear of it the rear of the chuck goes not that bad okay. uh, let's put the um, the pins on him those pins if you notice here there's a line and that's when you screw them in this part there you don't like uh, screw them right down to the bottom and just tie them up they have to be screwed to a certain height so when you tighten your uh, let's see how can I say your uh, cantilever door uh, your your cam that's it's more a cam yeah in the, uh, in the in the lathe that will come in here just to the right height and the right distance so when you put them in you just turn them until you reach the uh, on the surface there you you going to reach that line and that's the approximate uh, distance where you have to to install them let me just get it grab a seat there okay so I can visually see good I don't know if you can see pretty good just give me a second and I'll see line is about lined up with the uh, surface of the plate there and also lined up here is the uh, the key there it's some kind of a key to put a screw there. that that will lock it there and it's not screwed to the bottom it could go like uh, could go could go for for a few turns you know so but you want to stop it for at least for the first uh, try you got to stop it around this area that should give you uh, your uh, appropriate distance and I'll give you more details when we put it on the uh, the, the the late just okay now let's put the screw there that will lock the uh, the pin from uh, going out or just 
turning by itself. Just this. That screw doesn't have to be super tight, but good snug. And that's that's do it good. Okay, that's snug. No problem. Doesn't have to be like a torque to uh, very you know, high torques or anything. It's just like snug in there and it's not going to move. And uh, let me just put the other ones and then uh, we'll be ready for uh, installing that on the lathe. Okay, now we're uh, at the lathe. And the uh, plate is kind of uh, ready to be mounted. One of the uh, most important thing at this stage is uh, cleanness. So the, uh, the brooch, the uh, lake has to be super clean. This surface here, as clean as it can be. And uh, we'll be able to mount this just in a second. Little, uh, Yeah, my regulator needs a little bit of lubrication. Uh, I'll maybe in front a little bit because this is heavy and I my hands are hurting me a little bit, so I can uh, I gotta get a comfortable position for this. Okay, let's go. And this is kind of a, like in the 30 to 40 pounds uh, about ballpark. Uh, even my board underneath is too thin. Okay, now that's on. We see that uh, seems to be fitting pretty good in this area there. And uh, when you mount the chucks and uh, any 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 D mount, whatever size it is, you've got um, marks on there that you have to. Uh, look out when you uh, do the tightening here on top maybe uh, you probably don't see it there's a there's a line there just the uh, the file is right in it there and you got little v here and a little v here uh, let me put them in the um, put them in a sharpie or something and uh, you'll get what i mean in a second V there, V there, and probably don't see this one, but uh, <clears throat> okay. Now, when you tight this nut there, the line on top there has to go between, in between those two V's there, which are pointing like uh, 15 minutes after and 30 minutes after. That's important because that's the place where the uh, the cams will give the give of the most strain you know if you go a little bit past it'll hold but if you go like too much past like quarter two or 42 it might just go past the uh, the cam action and as loose as as loose as it can be so I just uh, eyeball them when I uh, put them in so we'll see what it does when I tighten this one Okay, now I tighten the first one and the black mark from the top is now here just about let's say 25 minutes after or something if you if you get like a clock and that's safe place to be that's no problem if it goes wears out or just changes or whatever and it goes further up then I'll have to look it up and uh, do something about it. Okay. Now, uh, I'll be doing the other ones and doing the same check. This one is 25 after. Oh, this one is 35 after. This one will have to be looked up. 35 after. It won't. Uh, it won't give me any problem. I'm not worried about it. But I'll take a note of this one, and I know this one has to be tightened up on the next uh, 
next time I remove this uh, this brake. So this one here, let's say this one is eight, 30 minutes. <laughs> okay, so this one will probably gain in being tightened up a little bit next time. Next one. This one is like 35 after. And we'll have to be tightened up. Last one. This one is 35 after. Now I'm going to do some roughing on this, taking the, uh, let's say, give me a tolerance. I'm not going right down to the uh, final diameter. Uh, the reason for that is when you do parts and there's lots of uh, material to remove, you just do a roughing cut. The roughing cut will allow the tensions to normalize in the part and also will uh, Let's say if it heats up or something, it gives you a little bit of meat to do your finishing uh, cuts and, and uh, all that stuff. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll do some roughing on this. And that will, uh, that will approach me to the final dimensions. And uh, as, as we go, I'll explain. Okay, now we'll give it a try. We're uh, 150 RPMs. Uh, still have like uh, about two inches to uh, on, the, on the diameter to eat up from this plate. So we'll give it a give it a try, give it a cut, and uh, see how it goes. Kinds of chips. It's not cast iron. Finally, it's a good news. So I'll be able to remove uh, most of the blankets, and we'll turn the right side up, not upside down. Okay, now. We have reorganized a little bit, and uh, I guess you see a few cardboards around the thing there. I'll show you why in a second. It's really hailing chips here. Okay, the cut is about uh, 175,000, and uh, we're going about 13,000 ahead per revolution and we're also turning about uh, I think it's 95 RPMs for 12 inches that's uh, and that speed that's a big cut just check this out Okay, 
Let's see what we did after a cut.